This is episode 2 of Spiritual AF with Pixie Rose, the podcast for people going on their spiritual journey, knowing that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. In this episode, I wanted to share my story and how I started Pixie Steps and the work that I'm doing now. I also wanted to take an opportunity for those of you that may not know me very well to get to know me and a little bit of my history. And also I wanted to take this opportunity to get a little bit vulnerable with you straight up because that's the kind of person I am. I believe that when you work with me personally, there's a level of vulnerability that happens. So within the work that I do, I'm always wanting to to, to sort of show you that you can be safe with me in your vulnerability. And I know I can be safe with you in my vulnerability. I think vulnerability is something that is really undervalued in our society in lots of ways. So I do want to put a little trigger warning on this episode because I will be discussing and sharing some personal experiences that may trigger other people. So this is in terms of um, in terms of things such as sexual assault and sensitive topics of that nature. So I was not born with the name Pixie. I was one of four girls and I chose because we all choose our parents and we choose our experiences. I chose to have parents with drug addictions and mental health issues. So as you can imagine... I had a really colourful childhood, to put it lightly. But straight away as a child, I was completely obsessed with fairies. I wanted a fairy room and I had imaginary friends that were fairies. And I, yeah, everything that I did was, was just about fairies. I just loved them. But... As a young child, I did experience some sexual trauma and because of this, I developed my own mental health issues from a pretty young age. So I started experiencing depression when I was quite young and also as a child, I just felt really different. I In lots of ways, I didn't feel like I had a childhood as many people did. I felt like I had to grow up quite quickly, but also I just couldn't, well, I couldn't wait to grow up really. And mostly I enjoyed to read. And another thing that I really enjoyed as a child was practicing witchcraft. So from different experiences within my childhood, I did develop a lot of depression as a as a preteen sort of from the ages 11 or 12 I started feeling quite depressed and and quite suicidal it was something that I would think of pretty regularly I was never happy in my life as a child I never really felt a lot of joy or happiness in my life so then around that age of 12 or earlier I had my first experience of someone in my life, in my family, that chose to leave this life. And then again, I had another experience. A girlfriend of mine also chose to leave this life. And because from these experiences, I started to wake up to the consequences of these actions and the ripple effects onto other people that then need to deal with the loss of loved ones that couldn't handle being here. So this was sort of the start of me wanting to change my life, really, at a very young age, being very unhappy with my life and wanting to change and wanting to to find more joy in life and not wanting to die. 
So as a teenager, I started to find some creative ways to explore the emotions that I was having. So I started, um, I've always loved writing and poetry. So in amongst all of this, I was very confused about my sexuality. So in a time where no one was really out it wasn't a really common thing like it is these days so much and also I was quite young as well when I was having these thoughts I was yeah 10 even earlier than that I've sort of always always felt attractions to girls and I didn't really understand it because it didn't seem to be my normal like heterosexuality was very normal and it did feel like a weird thing to be interested in girls. <laughs> so at 12 years old, I made friends with someone who I refer to as my soulmate, a very good friend of mine. And we both came out to each other. So he came out to me as gay and I came out as bisexual. So as a teenager, I felt really weird and I never felt like I fit in. And this feeling just got worse in high school. I felt, I always felt like an alien. I, I just felt like I wasn't part of this world and I just didn't get it and people didn't get me. But as a teenager, I did start to find friends that I could relate to and that really helped. So I just, I developed a, a friendship group, which was nice. Most of us were sort of same-sex attracted and, and going through those um, confusing states of, of sexual orientation and we were all getting bullied so we kind of could stick together in that sense as most high schools can be pretty cruel it was it was pretty traumatic um, being bullied in high school for having attractions to girls and and being different like I was a bit of an emo kid and liked metal music and that sort of thing so I was a bit of a target for other kids to sort of make fun of me. I would get food thrown at me and rocks thrown at me and, and all sorts of things like that. It was really difficult to deal with. Around that age of 12 years old, I, I started practicing yoga, which was also a very strange thing for a kid to do. And for my 12th birthday, I asked for tarot cards for my birthday. So I started reading tarot cards at 12 years old. At 14 years old, I experienced my first awakening in a way, which of course, again, was very confusing because I was very young and, and didn't have anybody who I could really talk to. Even though I had a good group of friends that we could relate to in the sense of our pain, I didn't really have anyone that I could relate to on a more spiritual level. So around 14 years old, I remember really struggling to sleep at night. And so I'm trying to get to sleep and suddenly, you know, I can see like light shining into, into my window and I move the curtains and I can see the full moon just shining so brightly through my window. And I just remember feeling cold by the moon. It was such a strange sensation, but I really went with it. I think it helped that I was on my own. And I just got this calling to go outside into the moonlight to take off my clothes and to dance naked under the full moon. So I, I believe this was my first awakening. And then going to school the next day and my friends asking me, oh, what did you get up to last night? And I was like, oh, I just danced naked under the full moon and, and also, you know, always getting that look of, you know, that weird look, like people just did not get me. So throughout my teenage years, I was unsure about my sexuality. I feel like a big part of this was because I didn't feel safe with men. I, I've never doubted that I'm attracted to women, but I have doubted my attraction to men mainly because I, I haven't felt safe and I haven't had good experiences with men. And this, this story and this experience continued through, through my life. At 15 years old, I experienced a, a sexual assault 
And this affected me in many, many ways and affected me for years. So I started self-medicating with drugs and alcohol after this to sort of numb the feelings that I was having after this assault, which unfortunately put me in more vulnerable positions to be assaulted and taken advantage of. I did report my rape to the police and then was bullied more at school. So not only was I bullied... um, about how like who I was as a person and the feelings that I was having but I then started becoming bullied about this experience that I had so my peers mostly the girls in my class called me a liar and said that I was lying about the whole thing um this bullying was was very very traumatic for me and I eventually dropped out of school I became homeless throughout this as well because my parents didn't know how to handle me and what I was going through. But throughout all of this, I did have support from different counsellors and youth workers. So because I was questioning my sexuality, uh, I did I did receive some assistance in yes the the school system, which was I'm, I've always been very very grateful for. And I do feel like this is what saved me out of everything was just always having someone, an adult, who was supporting me and and helping me feel safe in this world. So I, as a teenager, I was involved in a same-sex attracted youth group. And this youth group was my medicine for many, many years. It was the one place I felt completely safe I then got into a relationship with a woman who was a few years older than me and of course we moved in together straight away because that's the lesbian thing to do and also I was homeless. I did I was able to work on my drug addiction whilst in this relationship and having a secure place to live. And I redirected my energy into community community services and helping other people like me. So this was my first taste of being able to help other people and being of service. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I had purpose in my life. At the same time, my life was a complete mess over the assault that I had experienced. So the court process for this this assault took about three years, three years of my life. And mostly I had to deal with this on my own. I didn't have any family support. So once I dropped out of school, I was no longer a student and I was at risk of losing a my Centrelink payment. So I had to go through a job agency and this job agency enrolled and paid for my first TAFE course, which was in hospitality. But also because I had confided in my worker about the court case that I was dealing with and the assault, she took me across the road. And it was just, honestly, I just think it's incredible just the way that things happen, the synchronicities, you know, out of all of the job networks and agencies that I could have been taken to, I was taken to one that was like, first of all, the worker was obviously open to spirituality, but also it was directly across the road from a, like an alternative store that offered Um, different healings and this amazing worker at this job network also paid for my first ever alternative therapy which was EFT or emotional freedom technique so before this I had always had traditional counseling and therapy which I'm really grateful for and has helped me a lot but experiencing EFT was transformational for me So this was sort of my first transformational healing and and it felt like I was taking a step forward from healing from these sexual assaults that I'd experienced in my life. So in in this therapy, this tapping therapy, we actually addressed, I went there wanting to address the current assaults that I was dealing with with the court case, but I actually dealt with the the childhood trauma which was really profound for me 
she got me the the healer was able to to get me and to empower me to say things out loud that I had never said before not even to myself alone or anything and just saying something out loud was really healing for me and of course the tapping was just I I highly recommend this if you've never heard of this before EFT was really really profound for me and has helped me through a lot of sexual trauma Um, another worker that I was working with a youth worker that was helping me and supporting me through my court case Uh, She lent me my very first spiritual sort of based book, which was Notes from the Universe by Mike Dooley. And I can post some links to this in the show notes as well. It's a very simple book. And it was, again, like that's the start of my healing journey work with spirituality. So from here, I started learning about the law of attraction and I started waking up on where I was responsible in my life the things that I was responsible for in my life so then a couple years later I and still amongst all of this whilst I was in my sort of first relationship I I had my first ever Reiki session and with this session it was done by a friend and he was just sort of like oh hey do you want to try some Reiki And I was always a pretty open person and just sort of up for anything. So I had no idea what Reiki was, but I was just like, yeah, sure. You know, do whatever you want to me. (laughs) And I could not believe the profound experience and healing that I received just from this session with a friend. Um, So at that point, I was in a relationship which lasted for three years. We were together for three years but it was not an emotionally healthy relationship. She, my partner at the time, she cheated on me all the time. It was not great. (laughs) And after this Reiki session, I just felt really clear that that relationship wasn't serving me anymore. And I remember that relationship causing me so much pain and stress and drama. And I just remember like physically when my friend was 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 doing this reiki on me it felt like he was physically pulling things out of my body like pulling this energy this negative energy that was trapped in my body and it just felt like he just pulled it all out and i was just suddenly so clear on what i need to what i needed to do <laughs> so after this session i was able to leave that relationship I finished up my course on hospitality and doing this course in hospitality. I love um, Sahara Rose. She does the Higher Self podcast and she often talks about how rejection is redirection. And, you know, it's just amazing the path that we we take and the things that lead us to, to our path. Sometimes you don't realize what it feels like to be on your path until you go off your path. So doing this hospitality course was clearly not what I was meant to be doing. And I realized how passionate I was about helping people. So I started a community services course. So sort of throughout this time, I met my ex-husband. He's now my ex-husband. And we began, I began my first relationship with a man. We... I really utilized that law of attraction and power of manifesting and I was able to travel through Europe like I achieved so many dreams of mine with with my ex-husband. We bought a house together, we got married and had kids and all those things that you're supposed to do and all those things that you know society tells you like this is when you're winning at life you know buy a house and get married and have kids and then you'll be happy so I did all that as well as I got my diplomas in counseling mental health alcohol and other drugs and counseling and I started working in mental health But spirituality was so powerful for me that I always wanted to share how I felt like I completely changed my life 
with the energetic healing that I had been receiving and also consciously manifesting. I just always wanted to share the things that I was learning and the things that had helped me, you know, going from being homeless and drug addicted and being at such a low point in my life that I didn't even want to live to suddenly getting everything that I was everything that I asked for. So I started working in mental health and I didn't realize it at the time, but I was actually reading my clients. So I would build up a rapport very quickly and I just knew exactly what they needed. I knew about their life and their traumas without them even needing to tell me. And I just remember this felt so natural to me that I didn't even question it. I just felt like I was, I must just be really good at mental health. (laughs) And I did feel like in many ways I lived their life and I had survived it. So I felt like I had something to offer people and, and to share with people. So I was so passionate about helping my clients heal from their traumas So I worked in mental health for a number of years, but after a while, while I did feel more drawn to helping people on their spiritual journey rather than just dealing with basic needs. So I started to feel like I was ready to bring people closer to self-actualization rather than spending my whole life or my career supporting people with basic needs, you know, such as homelessness. I, yeah, I just felt drawn to working with people ready to achieve more from their life. So I felt like I was, I was being called to go further in my own life and to go in a a different direction again. But it wasn't till after I gave birth to my first child that things really shifted for me in a really powerful way. I experienced a transformation of the mother I was becoming. Everything shifted for me. My values, what was important to me, everything completely changed and I completely changed as a person. I had also, I had I had always been an intuitive person, but my intuition heightened so intensely after I gave birth to my child that I thought I was going crazy. So when my son was four months old, I gave up dairy so that I could continue to breastfeed him. He was diagnosed with a cow's milk protein intolerance. And giving up dairy, I believe, also really heightened my intuition. It felt like the dairy was acting as a blocker of, of some kind for my intuition. And it also helped me feel into my femininity. And I felt like I felt so much rage for the injustice that the feminine was experiencing. And this is all females, animals, cows, especially. So my empath abilities awoken and I did not understand what was happening to me. My husband wanted to put me in the mental ward in hospital because I appeared like I was going crazy. So, for example, we would be having dinner with his family and everything would be fine and everybody would be nice as pie to your face. But then suddenly I would feel this intense rage just come out of nowhere And I would feel it so intensely that I would just run out of the room. Like we were eating dinner and nothing, nothing rude was, was said to me, but I believe that I was picking up on, on the feelings that other people were having. And it was so intense that I just, you know, got my stuff and got my baby and ran out the door and everyone was just sort of like, what's happening? (laughs) And I would have this this a lot. So just sudden emotions would just come flooding to me and I just had no idea 
why I was experiencing it. You know, like it's like when you walk past someone in the street and you just pick up on all of their emotions and, and yeah, I just didn't realize what was happening to me. So I was also really feeling into conscious parenting and I was very passionate about not doing the cried out method with my son. So he was only a baby and I would have many arguments with my husband and his family about, about how you should or shouldn't parent. And of course, everybody knows that many people have very strong beliefs in this is the way you do things with with your child and this is the right way and don't do this, otherwise they'll do this. And But for me, I could just feel everything that my baby could. So I could feel when he was in pain and I could feel his fear. So intuitively, as a mother... I just couldn't ignore my intuitive instincts anymore, even though it completely went against the norm. And it was so confusing because I, I wanted to do things very differently as a parent compared to the rest of the world. For example, like I was really passionate about breastfeeding, baby lead weaning, choosing environmentally conscious options like cloth and nappies. So I just wanted to do things very differently as a mother. So because I felt like I was going crazy, I then got some holistic counseling. And in that counseling, I was told by my counselor that I was an empath. And then suddenly, you know, it was a huge light bulb bulb moment for me. I really started to understand what was going on because no wonder I couldn't, I couldn't understand why I was feeling the way that I was feeling was because they weren't my emotions at all. I was feeling into everyone else's emotions. So then I discovered Dr. Wayne Dyer and his work and teachings around the ego. I devoured every spiritual book I could find. I started questioning my marriage. So because spirituality was so important to me, anybody who wasn't supportive of this journey just didn't seem to fit in my life anymore. I left my husband. I lost all of my friends. I found myself pregnant and completely alone with my toddler. So this was my rock bottom, my first rock bottom. (laughs) At that point, because I was so into spirituality and the law of attraction, I was, I was always a really positive person. So often when difficult things would happen in my life, I would always try and find a positive way to spin it, you know, like, like Abraham Hicks. And I was always, you know, constantly trying to lift my vibe and stay in the vortex. But once I hit my lowest low, I started feeling my pain. You cannot heal without truly feeling your emotions. So this is when I started that. So I had to hit my rock bottom. And some people do before you can finally move up. So when I was pregnant, I received a psychic reading. So first she picked up on my empathic abilities. I sat down with her and she was trying to clear the energy so that she could read me. And she really, really struggled trying to clear the energy. She said that I had picked up everybody else's energy and was carrying it around with me so you can imagine why I was so confused I was so disconnected from my own energy and was just so absorbed and overwhelmed with everyone else's energy so this psychic started to teach me about protecting my own energy and next in the psychic reading she told me that I had fairy blood which was why I have always been so drawn to magic so this reading absolutely changed my life. It felt like she gave me a, gave me back a piece of my soul. It felt like she gave me a piece of my soul back. It felt like I had been given back a piece of my soul that I didn't realize was missing. At that point, I was running my own business selling environmentally conscious baby products. And then my path shifted again and I knew spirituality was my calling. I felt like I had these experiences so that I could help other people. I started attending mother circles and women's circles and spiritual and intuitive studies. And I started envisioning pixie steps. 
and then I became Pixie. And it's interesting because after looking more into the fairy realm and channeling the fairy collective, we have learnt that fairies often do pick their own names. So being intuitive was a natural gift of mine. So I always wanted to incorporate that in my life. And I've always had the belief that we should live our passions. Everybody should be living their passions and living their soul's calling and doing the things that they truly love. And I just wanted to share all the wisdom and knowledge that I had discovered and that had helped me so much. So just before I launched Pixie Steps, I was hit with another bump in the road and went through my second rock bottom. And honestly, I am still healing from this. I believe that the healing never stops because we never stop living. We never stop having experiences. So there's a lot more to my story, but I wanted to share this with you today. And I'm sure I will share more pieces of myself over the many podcast episodes that I have planned. I really appreciate you listening to my story. And if this has helped you in any way, I would love to hear from you. I will link all of my socials to the show notes. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm always available for a chat. I love connecting with people. And that's why I do what I do to connect with people. So don't forget to follow this podcast for more interdimensional conversations on all things life, death, and everything in between. And remember, if your wings have been clipped off, they can always regrow. I am living proof of that.